Okay, welcome back. In, in this video segment, we're going to create an interface. And um, there are a lot of things to learn in here, and I'm not particularly good at them all. The, there's a lot of practicing to become expert at this, but what we'll look at in creating an interface, we'll look at some widgets that are available for us to use in Android and their properties and how to change their properties and we'll talk about layout managers and we'll use at least two of the um, layout managers which cause the widgets in the graphical user interface to fall into the right place and we're not going to worry about making them work in this video so the code behind the interface is not going to be in this one it, it will be in a future one and I want you to think about um, the software architecture. So this doing it this way piece by piece really does make sense. So if you're familiar with agile development or even UML use case diagrams, the idea here is that we would break the application into pieces that correspond to something that the user does and then implement that part and get it working. And then the next piece that corresponds to something that the user does and implement that part. So the um, the applications in Agile software development get developed and tested in individually and based on something that the user does. Um, so in our use case, the use case in our application that we're going to tackle first is the entering of bowling scores and this is the design that we had in the um, in, in the previous video and I've gone around and collected some little graphics that might help and when we're designing this trying to make it look better this is a, a picture of the floor in the bowling alley that I took with my Android phone and we're going to perhaps use this image in the um, application. These little dots on the image are for where you line up your feet when you're getting ready to throw the bowling ball. If you're not, uh -huh. if you're not a bowler, that's what those dots are for. That distinguishes this from any other wood floor. So this is what we're going to attempt to make, and every time I make an interface, it turns out slightly different from what I actually designed, and that doesn't bother me. Um, when you're drawing on paper, you have obviously different tools than when you're um, working in a, in a design editor, a GUI design editor of some kind. So we're going to start out with this picture, and see what comes out when we start working in in the actual application. So let's go now into Eclipse and start building the application where we enter the bowling scores. Okay, let's begin right at the beginning and see if I can remember how to do this. I've had a big gap since the last video, so I'm going to make a project and it's going to be an ad Android project and I'm going to call this project my bowling scores and I'm going to build this in um, 2.3 which is SDK version 9 and the application name will be the same as the project name and the package name. The package name, remember, is kind of important because this is going to actually create the folders that the source code goes in. So I'm going to make a package called my bowling scores, all lowercase. 
Um, you can't use spaces here. These are actual um, uh, package names that would that that will be used in import and package statements. And we're going to create the first activity, the the one that will pop up. And I'm going to call this enter scores activity. Usually, I don't like to put in the identifier what it is, but this is complicated enough and we have enough new kinds of identifiers that I'm going to break that rule and say um, we can use that as part of this identifier. So let this churn for a few minutes and the X should go off. And it does. Okay, so remember our what's going on in here. We have this file called R, which is a generated file. If it's under gen, you don't go in there and change it. These are our resources, which we will go in and change. And um, under layout, we have something called main XML, and that is the um, the layout of the first activity by default. So here's the generated Java program which starts by saying the first activity will be set to that main layout and um, so this is what you get for free and this is where we will start editing. Okay, so the first thing I would like us to do is to change the name of this from main XML to enter scores XML. So if we go over here in the package explorer and right click and say refactor, one of the options under refactor is that we can rename something. And I'm going to use the naming conventions of lowercase with underbars enter scores XML so now we have a new um, named layout it's not called main anymore so we're going to say enter scores here and let's um, save this because it still thinks that there are compile errors in here and it's because we have not yet saved this file. So just do a control S on this and everybody is now happy. So let's open enter scores XML and it is this default layout and my understanding is that if you have a newer plugin for Eclipse that your working environment here is a little bit nicer than mine, but that's okay. This great big thing with all of the possible things in it is not that bad all, either. And we need a couple more windows. So my resolution is small for purpose of recording. So we need um, two more windows over here for working in this environment, and we need a an outline window and a property window. So under show view let's pick outline and this is um, automatically an outline of what our user interface looks like. Now let's open properties window. Let's open the properties window and this one is not as easy to find. If you do um, window show view we have to go down to other and in other under general there is a properties window. And let's pick that and now the, this is taking up too much real estate so I want to put kind of stack those on top of the other. So now I have 
the properties and the outlines window and we can go back and forth between those as we're working in this um, in this interface. So the first concept in user interface is that we have these things called layout managers and a linear layout means that the components that are inside of a linear layout are arranged in order either horizontally, um, sorry, vertically or horizontally, vertisontally. No. Um, and you can have a linear layout that arranges things going up and down or back and forth. <laughs> Okay, a as we're learning this, um, what I'm doing is kind of demonstrating one way of making one layout. And what I would like you to do occasionally is to mix your watching and, and experimenting in these videos with reading in the Android Developer's Guide. So in the Developer's Guide, um, one of the first topics is the user interface and I, if you have a look at this they don't really acknowledge that we're going to be using the GUI builder well I guess I guess they do over here but they um, talk about typing in the XML that represents the graphical user interface as if you didn't have the GUI builder. But that's okay, so long as you understand that we're doing it in a slightly different way and they're explaining um, the, the, the nitty-gritty of each of the things that we're working with. So let's, let's go back here and keep switching back and forth between the XML version of the the, the the interface that we're working with and the and the graphical layout. And switch back and forth or have a, a printed copy of this somewhere handy as your reference. This is what we're intending to create. So um, something that looks something like this, it won't turn out exactly like that. So let's start by putting a header on our interface and if you highlight this activity, no, that's not an activity. This is a, a text view and look at its properties. So here is a lot of careful window juggling so that you can see what you need to see. So this guy right here has a set of properties and we're going to change its properties so that it will um, suit our needs. So each widget that we work with will have a whole lot of properties that describe everything about it and this is kind of overwhelming isn't it? Um, let's change the text in the in this one and I'm breaking the rules somewhat here. Really we should go into the resources and make a string resource for this but um, I'm kind of I'm kind of going short on that because I want this to be done before Christmas. So I'm going to change the text to enter bowling scores with a colon at the end of it and you can see that it changes here and this is going to be the title of our interface so I would like the size of that text to be bigger and I'd like it to be centered okay so centering something called the gravity and I'm going to change the gravity to center horizontal
and I'm going to change the layout width from fill parent to wrap content. These names are not too descriptive. Okay, wrap content really means um, take up as much space as you need. So for the content of the uh, of the of the text, the text view, it should this widget should take up as much space horizontally as it needs based on what's in there, and then if we center it horizontally, it comes into the middle. Okay, so it's very small text for being the header of our interface, and I would like to fix that now. So I'm going to scroll down to the text size, and I'm going to specify how big I want this text to be. And I'm going to put, I want 25 SP. 25 SP. Okay, well that looks much better. It's much larger. And if you're wondering, okay, how did I get all of these things? How did I decide um, what properties to change? There was a little bit of trial and error, but there was also some reading. So if you just try um, changing all of these randomly until it looks the way you want it to, that's going to take you a long time. But I can tell you that it took me a lot longer than what I'm actually showing you. So flip back and forth between reading documentation and trying stuff and see if um, you can get good at it. Uh, I think that's the, that's the best advice, some combination. Okay, so this this header for is pressed right up against the top of the screen, and that makes me a little uncomfortable. Even not knowing very much about user interface, that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. So I'd like to do some padding. Okay, here they are. It's, it's, it takes me a long time to find my way around in here. So I'm going to pad the top of this with 10 pixels. And that means that we have now a little space built into this particular widget, so we have um, it starts to look a little bit nicer. Notice that when you click on different things, the properties window changes. So we're now looking at the properties of the linear layout for this whole window. And when we click on this, we're looking at the properties of this particular text view. And if you're changing the properties in one and hoping that it will change the properties in the other, that's a big problem. Okay, so, so far so good check the outline. We have a linear layout and we have a text view in it. In that linear layout, let's look at the properties of the linear layout that um, that we know about. Well, there's one, the orientation. So is it a column or a row? And this one is vertical, so it's a column. So this is the first thing in a column and we can put other things here. So far so good? I think it's a really good idea to run your application um, periodically and make sure that every everybody is still doing what you um, hope that they would be. So we're going to run my bowling scores as an Android application. Um, oh, I haven't added a virtual device. for 2.3. Okay. Okay. Remember this? Making virtual devices? Let's make a new one. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, maybe naming something consistent. Uh, 
I twenty three. And pay attention to this one as we're doing this, that we have an HBGA default for version 2.3. Let's create that virtual device. and my new device is not in here yet. So let's cancel that and start again. So the project is now associated with this um, new virtual device. And that took a very, very, very long time. I think I've got so many things open on this machine and recording the video at the same time. But anyway, we do have the application running and down here at the bottom this is the virtual device so the bad news is that launching these virtual devices takes a very very long time but you don't have to close it so we can change the application and we can run a new program on this machine so think of this as an actual device a physical machine even though it's not it's virtual and you don't have to shut it down and reboot it every time that you want to put another program on here and run it. So I'm going to minimize this. And then as we change something in here, we can run the application again and it won't take nearly as long. Okay, so one of the things that I want us to change is in this development environment layout that we're, that we're working with, I'm going to change from a 2.7 inch screen to a 3.2 inch screen. Okay, so I'm cheating a little bit in a way, but I'm deciding that um, for this application, I'm not going to market to people who have these um, little tiny screens. I'm going to start with a 3.2 inch screen and you can make a screen as big as you want or you can use these standard ones and there will be a an exercise for the reader to go and study all of the different possible screen sizes that you can use in Android development. So here's where we are so far. Let's go back to the outline. We have a linear layout which is vertical and we have one thing in it. Now I want to add something underneath that one thing and I'm going to add a layout to a layout. So I'm going to add a a linear layout and we're going to work inside of this linear layout. And we can add another layout to the layout and you see what happens we get a tree of layout managers here if we want to put a row of buttons here we can put a horizontal linear layout inside of the vertical linear layout and we start putting the user interface together bit by bit doing that Okay, so here we are so far. We have a linear layout. That's the one that um, you just start with. It's the whole um, 
the whole screen and then we put this text view on it and now I wanted to add another linear layout so that we can work in this part of the screen. So a linear layout inside of a linear layout. And the problem here is that the default for properties for the linear layout is um, this one the properties the height and the width um, the default property is wrap content which means make it as big as it needs to be and if there's nothing in it that's a problem you can't see it so if we do the width and height for now do the width and height of fill parent it will give us um, an understanding of where it is so that we can work in it and now we can put stuff in this layout here's another um, usability feature it shows the outlines of all the views and if you turn that on it does help with the understanding the complexity so I'm going to work inside of this layout the second one that we have added and I'm going to put a um, not an edit text but a text view and this is going to be for the date so this is an edit not an editable field it's we're going to fill it in and notice where it dropped it's inside of that linear layout. So the arrangement of that text view is it's at the top of this linear layout 01. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the name of this so that we have an identifier that's easier to remember what we're using it for. So this is going to be um, its ID I'm going to change that to date text view so I'm putting the type of the widget in the name in the ID and that's something I'm reluctant to do but there are so many of them that um, we're going to do it now so that we can tell them apart later and the text the text on there the default is to just put something about the ID I'm going to put that this is um, the date of the games and it's changing what we see on the screen and <clears throat> I think centering would be nice wouldn't it so let's go and change the gravity and we're going to do that's not what I wanted center center horizontal and it didn't do what I expected it to do. Okay, 
So I, I don't want these things to show up in the on the left hand side of this layout. So I'm going to go into the properties of this la this linear layout and I'm going to change the gravity inside of this layout. Okay, so if I go to the gravity here and change that to center horizontal, then the things that I put in here will wind up in the center. Okay, that feels much better. And if we change um, this text view, which I'm going to get today's date and put it in there, It's, it's jammed right up against the top, and that makes me uncomfortable as a design. Um, so make sure that that one is highlighted, and then we're going to go and, at the padding top, just give it a little space. Let's put 10px, which means we'll put 10 pixels in there, and that starts to feel a little bit better. So we're getting there. Man, this takes a long time. What have we got to work with? Um, when you're playing with the properties, the ones that are deprecated, this is what they've decided um, was a bad idea. So the properties of this text view, you can still change these, but you're not supposed to. And when you hover over them, they'll tell you which other of the properties you should be using instead of instead of those ones. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. So what I'd like to do now is to start putting the um, game one and an edit text and game two and an edit text and game three and an edit text. Remember this? So this center part where we're actually going to enter the scores and the the total and the total edit text is not really editable. It's it's going to be calculated. So I'm going to put another linear layout. And I'm just going to drop it in here. And then I'm going to change its properties so that it can take up all of the space available to it. Now, is this linear layout horizontal? I didn't mean for that to be true. Let's change the property of that linear layout. Now it's the orientation. I wanted that one to be vertical. And this one This one is vertical, and then this one is going to be horizontal. So let's change the orientation of this layout. To horizontal. And then I'm going to put a a text view and an edit text. There they are, horizontally lined up. So that one instead of being text view zero one, I'm going to change the text 
to game one. And that one, this is where we're actually going to enter the <clears throat> score for game one. I want to put for the text, I'm going to put the number 300 because that's the largest score that you can have. And I want to change the name of it because we're actually going to use that one in the code. I didn't bother to change the name of this one. It's It just has the <clears throat> the very ugly name text view zero one but this one we're going to use that in the code so I want to change that to um, game one edit text and that will make things a lot easier when we're writing the code to manipulate with this guy. Okay, now it's it's looking pretty messy, isn't it? So this one that's blue now is a horizontal linear layout and it has those two things in it and we've got it set so that it will take up all of the space in the parent. So let's go and fix that so that it won't take up as much space. And we'll do a wrap content on this one. So its height is going to be wrap content. Let's see what that does. Okay. And let's put its width as wrap content and see what that does and that starts to put it in the middle. We can turn these lines off once in a while to get a somewhat better picture of how this is going to look. So we have the date of the games and now we've got a place to enter the game the first score. So turn those lines back on when you need them and Okay, now we're going to add a place for game two and game three. Hopefully we're starting to get better at it. Are you getting better at it? It, uh, it's, it takes um, a lot of work. So I'm going to drop this linear layout in here. That seems to make sense but it can't work with it because we can't see it so I'm going to change the properties to fill the parent this way and fill the parent this way so we can see it and then we will add oh just wait the orientation I want it to be horizontal and I want to then add to it an edit a text edit and an edit text no a text view this is one that we won't change I mean we won't change the name of it we could just change the the text that's on it to game 2 and also in there an edit text and we can change what's in that one to 300 change its name to game 2 edit text Now go back and change the properties of this layout
to wrap content and wrap content. See if this is working for you. Hmm. Okay. Why are they different? Why are they not lining up exactly? And hmm. Should we have used a different layout manager so that maybe I put two spaces there and one space there? Isn't this frustrating? Okay, so there's no spaces after game one, and there are no spaces after game two, and they still don't line up exactly because the size of, oh, maybe, That looks better. This is probably not the best way of, of doing this. And people who are expert at designing these user interfaces um, know which of the layout managers to use to put the, less, the least work into getting their layout to work correctly. So just after we get comfortable working with um, these layout managers, the, the linear layout. So there's the linear layout that is horizontal for that one, and there's the linear layout. And if you click on these, you can see there's the all-enclosing one that takes up the whole, the whole screen that we have. Maybe we should try a different one to do game three. Let's try a a relative layout and see if there's something interesting to learn in here. Okay, so in this relative layout, we're going to put game three and see how it's done just a little bit differently. Well, okay, I hate to do this, but I'm having some trouble getting things into the relative layout using this editor. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's look at, let's look at the at the outline. We have this is the relative layout which you can't see. He's down here. If I change his properties to um fill parent fill parent that allows us to see the relative layout, but then it doesn't allow us to drop anything into it. Problem. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, let's use um, wrap content, wrap content. So that means that we can no longer see the relative layout in here. But if we go into the XML, here's the relative layout and all of its properties including wrap content, wrap content. And I'm going to leave a space here in the XML and in the graphical interface I'm going to drop the text view and an edit text. So they're not part of the relative layout which we want them to be. So I'm going to go into the XML now. Isn't this ugly? And there are the two text view, the two objects that we just created. And I'm going to put them in 
the relative view and see if anything blows up. Okay, so they are in the relative view, but they don't look right because we haven't we haven't done what we need to do with these two guys. Okay. So text view 03. I'm going to go and put um, that's going to be game three on the text. And the edit text property of this edit text, the text property. It's going to say 300. Okay, so it's not appearing the way we want them to, and that's because we haven't addressed the issues dealing with the relative layout. So relative layout means relative to the other things that are in the interface. So we can do stuff like align it to somebody else to the top there's a lot of it isn't there okay so let's take the the thing that says game 3 that's the text view 0 3 which isn't in the right place at all and we're going to look at its properties and we're going to say layout align parent left turn that on and layout center vertical let's turn that on so it'll fit in the middle going up and down now let's take the other guy the one that has the 300 in it and we're going to we're going to tell it that um, we want it to be layout to the right of wow I can't remember which is which see maybe I should have fixed those that's okay that guy is text view 03 so the edit text I want it to be to the right of <laughs> didn't I say text view 03 His ID is text view 03. So if I say I want that guy, yeah, that guy to lay out to the right of well, let's pick text view 02 and then added it to text view 03. Man. Man, oh man. Was that ugly or what? It's not my fault. 
Okay, turn these off so we can see what we're doing. That starts to look okay. So relative layout is where you specify the layout in terms of where it is compared to other things. So you can say to the left of another component or to the right of another component. Perhaps what we should have done is we should have said that this is to the left of that instead of that is to the right of that. It can be a little bit tricky. While I was playing with this, I um, created some and, and very easily created some things that are impossible. So if you say it's to the left of something and it's to the right of it, uh, how is it going to process that and create a layout that is what you wanted? Um, what would be nice is if it just would blow up and say um, I can't put something to the left of and to the right of something else, but it doesn't seem to do that. It seems to make a guess of, of what you wanted. That's a bit of a problem. Carrying on. Carrying on. Let's, let's do some more. Okay, so I want to put the sum of the series. The series is all three games combined. So I want that to appear below the three values that are entered. So I'm going to add a... Um, well, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of not happy with the relative layouts using this editor. I'm sure that relative layouts are very, very fine to be using in um, most of the time. But let's do let's do another linear layout here and change its properties. This is the part where we got in trouble. Excuse me, with the linear layout, we're going to change its properties to um, fill parent fill parent, just so that we um, can see it, and then drop in a a text view. And I want to write on the text view that that is the series. Oops. Should I write series total? I don't think that was in my design. That's okay. Let's make this linear layout. Um, Well, I'm going to put another another text view, and this one is going to be filled in by the program. And we do have a horizontal um, linear layout. So this one, I'm going to change the text of it to 900 to kind of indicate that it it will be the series total of these three which are maximum of 300 but I also want to change the ID here so I want to change the ID to series total text view. Did I put test? Dang. Text. Okay, now let's take this and put it back to wrap content, wrap content. Yeah, that works pretty well. A 
I'm just going to sneak a little bit of space in there. So when the user enters their three games, I'm going to show them their series total right away. And then, what do we need to do next? We need to save. And we need a button to go to show the history. So a save button. Let's put a save button here. I'm going to change its ID to um, save button. And the text on it I will change to save. I'm going to put another button and this one will be to switch from one activity to the other. This one is for us to the show history button And the text on it will be how about show history. I wonder if everything is working. Let's run this and see what happens. We haven't run it for a long time. But we do still have our emulator down here, so this time when we run it, let's see how long it takes to compile the application and build it. And that's very, very fast, relatively. I didn't um, edit out any anything in there. And, well, look at what we have. It's starting to look like an application. This is a little bit jammed up in here and suppose we want to enter well look at that I don't want to be able to enter all of this stuff I just want to be able to enter numbers so we have these these text boxes we could do better with the um, the soft keyboard that pops up for the application. We, and this is a button that works but does nothing. And this is a non-editable text field and this is non-editable. Non-editable from the user's perspective. We are going to edit those in the, in the code. Okay, so let's go and um, it, don't close this because it'll take too long to run again but just minimize it and now each of these we can specify characteristics of that button I'm going to say that the input type for that guy is a number. There is no bowling score option, so we'll choose number. And the input type for that one is number. And for that one so that should automatically get us um, if you watch the console, you can tell when it's time to go and look and see what's going on. So when you're starting the activity, which is my bowling scores, that means that it will be here. So if I want to change that, that looks much better. I just want to be able to type, oh my. So if I had if I had big fat fingers and my score was 255, I would be able to enter that there and then use my finger to touch that one. And hmm, probably we should 
make that a little bit more user friendly, shouldn't we? So 256 and then delete, delete, delete 635, which is not a valid bowling score. And then save those scores and we would see the total. Okay, we're getting closer. We're, we are getting closer to a user interface that we can use. So everyone will play around with these as they as they want to. Um, what, what else can I do in here? Okay, I, I have a an image kicking around someplace, a JPEG, which I I took a picture of the floor at the bowling alley. So let me see if I can go and find that. Okay, so I have a, a, a JPEG file called floor.c and I dropped it into my drawable HDPI file folder and now in here in my interface for the top level linear layout I'm going to change the background to something that is drawable and I have one called floor.c and say OK. OK, so now we have this nice hardwood floor of the bowling alley background. Turn off those lines. And we have light colored characters on a light background. That's not so good. And these two buttons seem to be jammed in here when we had some extra space down here. So there there are quite a few things that could be done to make this a little bit better. And well, that's kind of okay because you're going to get much, much better at this than I am. I want to see if my my wood floor image has worked. Okay, so this looks a little bit better. Um, if you are in a bowling alley once in a while, you would recognize what these dots are. And if you have a hard keyboard, it works. Your fingers will work. And this, this is the soft keyboard. Hmm. Our interface probably shouldn't allow that to happen, should it? That's okay. That's okay. So here's where I want us to be. I want everyone to have a functioning at, at some level so that we have a place to enter three integer numbers and we have a place to write two things, write the date in here, we're going to write a calculated number in here, and two buttons. So we're going to save the data that the user has entered, and then we're going to switch to another activity, and that will be where we pull the historical bowling scores out of a database. Well, I, I really feel like I should mention one more thing that I tripped over while I was doing that. I created this um, JPEG file and I dropped it into the resources and for some reason it, it would not allow me to use a file name with a capital letter in it. And then I had all sorts of problems trying to convince it that I now was not using the file with the capital letters in it. Um, th this, this software is kind of new 
and there are some frustrations with it. So we just push on, keep going. So the interface that we came up with is not exactly the same as um, what I originally started with. So this was the design that we were aiming at and I really couldn't think of a good reason to have a cancel button when I was in the middle of doing it. What would the cancel button do? Um, clear the three text boxes? So I, I just decided, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. Maybe I could go back and add it later if I feel like it's really necessary, but when you're actually implementing it, you feel differently about the design than when you're designing it. And it isn't that I just didn't want to make another button. I could have made ten more buttons, but I didn't see that that would be a useful button. And having stuff in the interface that um, doesn't need to be there is, is a liability. Let's go back to where we were a while ago. Um, when you're building this application, one thing that we've done now is we've designed the view. And what do we need to do next? So we have, um, we have an application that runs and it has a view and we have to uh, get the numbers out of the interface. So if the user types in 100, 200, 300, we have to get those three numbers and save them as a set of scores. And then um, put those scores into the database. Manage the scores in the application. So have a record of all of the, the, the data that's in the database if we want to do that. So we have a ways to go, but I think that the next thing we'll do is probably um, handle the events from that user interface that we just created. So if the user types in three numbers and hits um, save, we should hear that they've clicked the save button and go and get the um, the numbers out of the out of the user interface. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. We talked about layout managers and the widgets and their properties, and we um, made a fairly complicated user interface. It's not perfect, but we got fairly far using just that graphical user interface builder and um, linear layout and relative layout. Trial and error is okay. Some of it has to be with trial and error. Uh, who would have known that I can't have a capital letter in my file name? And some of it is reading the, reading the concepts. So if you've never built user interface before, reading concepts will save you time instead of just trying and, and failing. And um, this, this part of it, I will tell you, is not my favorite part. So getting a user interface to look the way it should and to act the way it should is not my favorite part of building um, building applications, but it's one of the most important parts. I mean, that's that's what the user gets to see. Your application won't sell if it's ugly. So that's that's the issue. We've got to we've got to keep doing the best we can and keep thinking about your application. So as you learn new um, new skills in in Android, thinking think about how your application will change as you as you learn. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.